Ladies and gentlemen, from the legend of Zelda, the Wind Waker, Link. Oh, what a day. What a day. What a, what a gaming day. It's always a gamer day. <laughs> uh, hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome. I'm going to play Grime. Um, the game where every time I look at it, I think about Head Like a Hole, just because I've also been listening to a lot of Nine Inch Nails lately. It's weird, man. Nine Inch Nails has, like, a couple of just banger tracks, and the rest are just, like, deeply uh, depressing, like, sound collages and audio landscapes. Um... Which makes them ideal for video game music, I guess. Oh, also, this is my this is the wallpaper for today. Devito is a new uh, a new Pokemon, it seems. One that you can't wait to catch. I mean, it's like it actually made the most sense to me when they started doing Ghosts. Uh, I guess when I say started doing whatever, they released like four albums and then another one later. But that was more like to me that was more of a distillation of of the musicality of the group rather than like songs that have two verses and a chorus and a bridge um i guess when i say the group i may mean specifically trent reznor uh strider with the vip or ban it's time to play the most dangerous game let's see who let's see how it goes today what's grimy what's grimy ah hey congratulations Congratulations. Uh, congratulations, Strider849. Welcome. Welcome to the, uh, welcome to the club. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, actually, here, let me drag this, let me drag this on, uh, let me drag this on stream for a second. So, uh, let me make this very clear. VIP or ban is absolute. Everything's al always worked. But also, check this out. Uh, maybe I shouldn't say this, because this might... So, welcome behind the scenes for a second, but also... Um, so it's recursive, because I'm, this is on the monitor that's also being displayed, but... So, if you look on the left... No, you can't see that, because my webcam's in the way. Alright, hold on a minute. I'm gonna figure out how to do this. Bang. All right. So if you look over here, there's a script that picks one of these two files, ban or VIP, to play, and that's basically what decides whether or not you get a VIP or a ban. However, so VIP goes to VIP.webm, right? But I made a mistake, because ban also goes to VIP.webm. So actually, um, there was no way to not get VIP for a second there. I don't know how long it's been like that, um, but it's been fixed. So now you can actually get banned again. However, uh, we'll just we'll just chop that up. We'll we'll chop that up to the stars. Uh, the stars decided for a while that uh, <laughs> Battleroid. Thank you for the resub. Are you gonna cry? Why? Why? Oh wait. Did are you like almost? Are you almost at the at the number of points you need? And I fixed it. Fixed it. All right. Okay. So, well, it, it's good to hear like you're maybe maybe not figuring things out, but at least you got some next steps, JC. I'm sorry that things have been so unstable for you. In that case, I should re retry. Don't want it to be not fair. It it whatever. Fairness doesn't matter. I don't think Pop Tart. I think you've you've earned it in more ways than one. So don't worry about it. Oh, you're like 35k away. Okay. Ah. Uh, <laughs> okay. Big distraction. All right. What is this game? Well, it's got very loud menu music for one, but. Um, this, my understanding is that this is a Metroidvania, a 2D action platforming RPG. Um, oh, Strider, thanks for gifting five subs. Look at that, all you gotta do is just rig the system for your friends and then they'll, they'll, they'll scratch your back with a little, little gift sub action. Thank you very much, Strider, and congratulations. Uh, Yen Wajo, thank you very much for gifting a sub. Uh, but it looked cool. Sorry, going back to Grime. It looked cool. I don't know anything else about it beyond that. So I'm going in fairly blind, which is honestly how I uh, like to... I prefer to, to play that way. I like the spontaneity of uh, experiencing a game without a whole lot of familiarity about its world or its systems or its design or anything like that. Jack the Janitor, how you doing? Hello. 
What's up, Tegze? Welcome again. Got to actually work now since manager's staring at me. Be back later. All right. Thank you very much and congratulations again. Uh, is this on GOG give you kickbacks? I was interested in purchasing. Um, sort of yes. So... If... Hold on a second. This intro is rather transfixing. Bisexual lighting. That's a term that I've learned lately. Um, I'm very curious to see if the main character being headless has like what significance that has or if it's just like it's that way because it looks cool um all right good old games they gave me free games uh i'm an affiliate of the store so they gave they provided this copy of the game to me for free in exchange i'm playing the good old games version of it and uh generally recommend that you use the good old games store um but I would have done that before they gave me free games, because I, I love good old games. Um, tracking. All right. If you go to GOG.com, you just punch that into your browser, you buy the game, I don't see a cent. doesn't matter. Um, if you use my tracking link, um, you'll go through to the store and you'll be tracked from me. So for about a week, anything you buy, I'll get a, a small commission on, 6%. It doesn't make the games more expensive. Um, it doesn't do anything. Uh, all it does is, is it shaves off some of the purchase price and gives it to me. Uh, you don't have to do that. You can just go to GOG.com, or if you have a tracking blocker, that won't work. Uh, that's such an immaterial and small part of it that I don't... Like, I need to tell you that, but it's not a motivating factor in anything that I do, if that makes sense. So, it would be unethical for me to not talk about it, but it, it's not... It's so little money. It's more important to me that you find games that you like and buy them from a store that you... That you you know, enjoy playing on. Uh, it's more important that you buy an indie game that tries something cool that you really enjoy than, than worry about how much I'm I'm uh, vamp vampiring money out of the process. Okay, so this is like advent of life kind of thing? Oh boy. This is gonna be some art. We already got a title card. We get credits over like a, a linear intro sequence. That's always good. I mean, so it seems like, you know, man, woman come together to create a, this form, this punished form. Fuck. As, as, Weird. It's, it's like as particular as Stephanie can be about chords. Somehow her desk is always a nightmare for our nice little uh nice little Robovac. Also like it's a it's a de decidedly masculine form, which I'm kinda surprised about given that it has a head like a hole. This is a Metroidvania? That's my understanding. That is my understanding, but uh it certainly looks like one, doesn't it? I don't know that much about it to be honest. Secrets. What's up, guy? Kneeling, hands upstretched as though invoking the, uh, the mercy of some god. 2D, 2.5D platformer? Seems like it. There's a counter? Alright. That counted? Huh. Okay. The timing was wretched. This game looks rad. Yeah, I'm... I'm curious to see what it's about. That feels like a, a really long animation if it's gonna be the main way that I interact with enemies. The Roombas and such work very well. They work. Um... It's, it's hard to, like, argue with the results, given that a lot of the times it is just put it on the floor and boop it, and then let it do its thing. The fact that it, it, like, it picks up a significant amount of stuff, and then the floors are noticeably, noticeably cleaner after running it, so. It does require some maintenance, though. Yanking hair out of it is kind of a time-consuming process. You gotta, like, clean it out and bang out the, the air filter and stuff. So it's... 
it's not a completely um, maintenance-free experience, but it's a lot faster than actually sweeping everything up. Sort of. Like, your part is faster, but it takes the robot a lot longer than it'd probably take you to actually sweep the floor. That makes any sense? Oh yeah, thank you for the anonymous gift, too. Aren't carpets a big deal for them to this day? Uh, it does get wound up uh, in carpet fibers, yeah. At least, so there's some floor mats for like showers and stuff, and it'll it'll get itself pretty lodged into that. It has like a little spinning rotor that uh, starts to get tangled up in carpet fibers. Yarp. So, typically I either just close the bathrooms or put the... Put the bath mats uh, in the showers. Then they're safe. Got this cable organizer box and it hides quartz from my cat and organizes it. No, it's not that. Uh, it is not for for like for lack of cord organization. Ew. Uh. It's like. Like, I'm seeing cum and a dick, but also a vagina, sort of. It's like all of it. It's interesting, too, the colors. It's because this is the purple and the, the red. I mean, bisexual. Genders coming together. I've seen Idris Elba's latest tweet. <laughs> I didn't expect to hear that today, but now I have to click on this. Oh, he's going to be in Sonic? Good. Oh, he's Knuckles. Awesome. That's the coolest thing ever. Idris Elba's knuckles. That makes sense. Hey, doodly doodly doodly. Activate a surrogate. Growth. <laughs> I was gonna say grow. Gross. But then I saw growth. Deep voice on knuckles. I know, it's happening. Knuckles is finally gonna be as cool as we knew him knew he could be. As we knew he always was. That's dumb as hell, man. That's like something that... That's like a bad Photoshop that somebody would do to make make fun of Sonic fans. Idris Elba as Knuckles. Yeah. Weeping cavity depths. I mean, if this isn't a birth analogy, we are crawling out of a giant vagina right now. Stillman, thank you for showing me the Knuckles remix. God, it's such a good track. You know what? You know what? Given given the given the wonderful news we've just received, I think it's only fitting that we we enjoy a round of the Knuckles track. Man. Knuckles from Knuckles and Knuckles full version and Knuckles. It's a good track. Tougher than knuckles, the best of them, tougher than knuckles. You can call me knuckles, unlike knuckles, I don't chuckle. I'd rather flex my knuckles, I'm hard as knuckles, it ain't hard to chuckle. I break them down whether they knuckles, the knuckles, unlike knuckles. I'm independent since my first chuckle, first knuckles, still the knuckles, then no knuckles, chuckle. Born on an island in the knuckles, the gum, the knuckles, flows inside me. My doo doo flows, streaking. Cleanse yourself. No. Uh, yeah. I will be the one to set your knuckles free. True. Cleanse yourself with them comes They exist in you. Uh. All right. That's 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 just that's getting childish. That's just getting child. That's just puerile. Come on now. Come on now. Respect knuckles a little more than that, please. Battle Roy, <laughs> thanks for gifting five subs. <laughs> oh man, I love Knuckles so much. Okay. Uh, anyway, back to crawling out of this dri drippy vag cave. Uh, <laughs> imprinted Levelem becomes your checkpoint and surrogate. You know what? This game reminds me a little bit of El Shaddai. Um, so far. And it's like creepily... It's like creepy origin myth kind of feeling. Um, man. 
You are shattered. You will reform at the last created surrogate. As you reform, so will most prey. Use their mass to develop your vessel. It's shard in the womb you inhabited. It can be used such again. Okay! A lot of this verbiage, too, like, talking about you shattering. You're, like, made out of clay. Um, I remember there being a lot of biblical references to the body being a vessel or a vase or a container, and then the soul being what's inside, something a little more ephemeral and magical. So maybe it's like your body is, is this clay vessel, this clay container, and the soul is floating above it, but it's not inside of it yet. So maybe this is like stylistically supposed to be the origin of the, the unification of, of man's, what's the word? Like man's consciousness with man's body. I say man because this does, this is giving me like, like creepy deep biblical vibes. Like what angels are described as in the Bible kind of thing. Maybe, maybe I'm uh, just drawing parallels because that's, it's my culture and heritage. But, it certainly feels like that. Ow! Right. I'm gonna... I'm gonna guess maybe if I absorb enough attacks, then I get that attack. Kind of like a... the DS Castlevanias. He had a life bar. What is it with games and sexual or birthing correlations? I mean, it's not... It's not just games. <laughs> it's it's pretty much everything. Um, there's a lot of one thing that, oop, oh, oh, I healed. Okay. One thing I found is like um. I think the most common literary device that I see still in in modern media, maybe just in in Western movies, is like rain symbolizing rebirth. That sh that shit is everywhere. Um, I just watched Suicide Squad and I'm like, they're doing it too. Okay, all right, fine. I mean, it's it's not bad, or like water, bapt baptismal references and things like that. Um, maybe it's just the thing that I see the most. That's people have a dirty mind, to be honest. I don't know. Uh, maybe. I, I don't know. I, I can go 50-50 on that. Sometimes it's like, sometimes people I think do... Especially for, for pieces that have been analyzed to death. Go pretty deep to try to find something new to say. And sometimes that, that depth is, uh, is a little absurd. But I think sometimes imagery is pretty easy to see. And it's put it's placed there on purpose. Is this game like side-scrolling Dark Souls? Um, I don't, I don't know. Um, cause that, when you, that description to me is more like something like, um, Blasphemous, which, uh, also, very... Tons of religious imagery. Sorry, my robot vacuum is kind of making herself known. Um, man, tons of religious imagery in that one. Or like Salt and Sanctuary. Um, I don't know that this is like that just yet. I would say this is, so far, just based on like the speed of your movement and the, the speed of your mantle, just like little immaterial things, I would say this is more like Bloodstained. Or it's more like a, a Metroidvania. These days, however... It's been a while since a proper... Well, unless you count Bloodstain. It's been a while since, like, a real proper... I guess Ori? Maybe? Also that kind of game? Slap me! Hua! Agony? Yeah. <laughs> For sure, Agony. Wait. Wait, which one was Agony? Was Agony the... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the first person one that was, like, real tryhard edgy. I was into it. I didn't mind it. Everyone, like, everyone accused that game of, or everyone, I think, justifiably understood that game of being try-hard, but, like, why? I don't know, like, what's, you, you can have a walking simulator in, like, a Seattle house about lesbians. Okay, fine. You have a walking simulator in hell itself, suddenly that's, like, that's, that's too gross, that's too try-hard. I'm not saying that, like, a house is, is, uh, is too gross or try-hard, but, like, it's it's art, man. Like what why is one more valid than the other? I'm like accused it of being bad. Yeah. No, that's fair. I mean it I don't know that it it was a walking sim, I guess. What did it get wrong? Actually, I, yeah, now that I now that I I do remember playing it a little bit and the uh level design wasn't the best. It was really easy to get stuck. 
and like in small, gross intestine rooms. I think it was all the sex scenes. Yeah, those those got pulled out uh, of context. But I guess if you're gonna have if you're gonna have something in the game like that, you have to expect people to, which may be part of the shock value. Okay, weird. The vibe and no message. That's a that's a valid point. Yeah, it really didn't have a whole lot of uh, artistic merit, did it? It was just kind of gross for gross's sake. I think I think there's validity to that because it's a video game, though. If that makes any sense. Like then it's just kind of like a digital art exhibit, a very gross one, but you know it's not too far removed from walking through a very avant-garde like modern art exhibit with guts everywhere and videos of demons fucking. I could see it happening. It? I don't know. I think the frame frame makes the difference in some, some cases. One of the many varied ways to crush prey. Hey! Oh, I have a I have a weapon now. Okay. That's kind of fascinating though. They made me do an entire sequence just practicing the parry before they gave me a weapon. Yeah, it even sounds kind of like stone when you smack it, or like pottery. Also, there's just a lot of pots around. Some of them have arms. Hey! Yep! Discovered a trait. Oh, that, that will be a neat mechanic. If it's like, you can beat it to death with your stick, fine. But if you, if you absorb enough of them, then you get a... Yeah, okay. Road to gain her strength. Successful absorb or repel. Oh, I just have that permanently now? I don't have to like equip it or anything? Huh. Okay. I do like it when like a repeated expression of skill leads to a fundamental upgrade. Um I always thought Wolfenstein like, uh, Machine Games' is Wolfenstein always had a really interesting... It just... It doesn't even hurt. Just like a little shove. <laughs> Could have been a solid indie game like Layers of Fear. So, Layers of Fear doesn't really have a message either. It has a, a bit more of a narrative, and it's not as gross. Um, but Layers of Fear does have better design in general. I think they do a lot more interesting stuff with the idea of a, you know, a haunted, haunted house. Or a haunted, like, sidewalk is kind of what those games tend to be. They're really fun, and yeah, it is, it is, you're basically just walking through, walking a path and getting, looking at all the cool stuff, and then letting the sort of, like, atmospheric and vague storytelling inspire some sort of story in your mind. Uh, it's more of a character study, I think. Oh, Layers of Fear? Yeah, it is. Um, that's a good way to describe it, actually. I really thought about it that way. Layers of Fear is almost poetic, and like how it will present scenes that represent uh, a person or an event, uh, or give you just little snatches of like song lyrics or something. Oh, ancient limb. All right. All the enemies are called prey as well, which is kind of interesting. So I'm here to hunt them. That by itself, so I'm thinking on these on these notes because I'm reading this, I, I've been reading this book for, I swear to God, like three years, but lately it's been talking about how um, Western economy is sort of dominated by, or it is a, it is a prevailing theory, I should say, that Western economies are, are dominated by the Christian notions of the earth being man's domain to exploit. Which, you know, is kind of topical now, given that we're locked into some shitty uh, climate problems. But uh, the notion of, like, of not recklessly embracing every new technological advancement and uh, maintaining parity with your landscape, those notions existed in other cultures, but they didn't really survive because... Um, or they didn't gain global dominance, I should say. 
because when compared with another culture that's totally okay exploiting every resource in their in their vicinity and also are pretty expansionist and colonial whoops uh you kind of land where we are now so it's uh when it comes to like this notion of me being man or having man's form not completely formed yet but every other thing in my in my area is prey it is for me to attack and harvest for my use um, makes me think about that oh bo oh baby yeah we got us a metroidvania map we got us an ori i have not finished ori 2 and that game is awesome I see. Horse is stamina in this game. Oh. Ah! Okay, it feels like the... Maybe they were... Maybe they, uh... Maybe they make... <laughs> the character's name is Boulderhead. Maybe they make the, uh... Timing windows a little wider at the beginning. Because I'm starting to get hit a little bit. This guy's name Spikey back. Spike me. Ow. Huh. You know what? I never realized it might also be a mechanic to figure out how to interact with enemies to get them to attack you. I couldn't even absorb him because he was just crawling into me. A hunter must hunt, indeed. I don't know who I am. I don't know why I'm here, but I know that I must hoont. Hey, who's that guy? Anybody with a butt can't be a bad guy. Oh, that's cool. The little spikes come off and form like an axe head. <laughs> it's just such a disempowering little swat. He's like, no. No. <laughs> this is my shelf. I've stayed here for a long time. You can't sit here. No. <laughs> I guess you can't absorb them when they're in the air like that, too. It's interesting. They're, they're already starting to, like, show me examples of how this small mechanic uh, can be mixed up. Uh-oh. Is this... Is Diamond Boy? Spike Hand. I only played Dead Cells. It is very good. It is very good. If you like Dead Cells, you might want to move on to Hades. Because those games feel very similar. The idea of progress versus respecting the environment is super interesting to explore, especially in the U.S. There was this idea of the machine in the garden, which was Americans wanting to have the latest and greatest technology while also having nature interwoven into society. Huh. Where did that notion come from? And where did it go? I've always, I mean, I've always had a fascination with, like, green buildings and uh, structures that are, like, forested to try and offset carbon and stuff like that. Already bought it for Steam and Switch. Glad to hear it. There's a, there's a meter. Okay. Ah. So after the health went below the meter, they started doing attacks that I could absorb, giving me a hunt point. Gained a hunt point. What is that? Maybe I can, like, upgrade road to gain. He pulls on nearby vulnerable surface, revealing him pass. Oh. Okay. I don't know what the hunt point does, but I'm glad I have it. Prickly weeper chest. Call me a prickly weeper. Well, this is this is kind of Dark Soulsy, having like an inventory you bind to a D-pad. Sharp nail with a fingertip formed at the end can be thrown to mildly annoy foes. Oh, maybe this is a way to provoke them to attack. Okay, those are like souls. Got it. And that's the homeward bone. Okay. Curious what your thoughts are on the Steam Deck if you haven't already mentioned it on the stream before. Rat, uh, I, I think it's great. Um, I'll admit, when I first saw it, I think everyone had this sort of like, well, you, well what do you think you're doing? 
What is, what is this? What do you think you're doing? But uh, I thought about it more and I was like, okay, well, it's going to be good for some people and I'm glad about that. And I was like, probably not for me. I've got like a gaming PC. If I travel, I'll just, I'll probably just stick with my Switch. Um, but then I thought about it even more. Kept thinking about it. Kept ruminating in the old noodle. And I, I really do believe that the thing that excites me the most is that it's a, it's a $400 PC. Um, and that makes me super excited for, like, kids that want to play around with tech and get it for, like, a Christmas present. Families that can't afford an $800, $1,100 PC don't want to, like, or, or maybe feel uncomfortable with their kid having this, like, full PC in their room, thinking, like, oh, they're going to hack the Pentagon. They're going to, they're going to, like, give away all our credit cards to porn sites. Um, I, f I feel like that's the... The Steam Deck settles into this niche where you can ask for it because it's like a Switch. And instead of getting a Switch, you get a full PC. And then the enterprising youth out there can install Windows on it, can like... From there, it's just like, just having a full PC in the hands of more people is, I think, really cool because it will help more people develop skills that will be more vital in the future. I don't know. I. I, I get more excited thinking about it in terms of like an, an educational device of of like a kid getting it when they're 12 and teaching themselves video editing and image editing and and making like special effects and TikToks and stuff like that. Becoming a visual artist uh, through through something like that. That's cool. Um, they also mentioned that uh, I mean, I, I honestly wouldn't mind if Linux as, a, as an operating system were a bit more viable. And I've already seen uh, headlines that like AMD is going to start working on some, some better framework tech for, um, for Linux as a gaming operating system. So I really can't see how it's a, it's a bad thing for gaming at all. The only thing that does kind of make me roll my eyes is it's, it's, you know, it's coming with Steam, and that's that's not a bad thing because it is an open system. So there's re there's really no ire there. If it were locked to Steam OS somehow, or if you had to jump through more hoops to like install Windows or something else on it, um, I'd be more annoyed. But I d like Valve kind of did everything right. <laughs> I can't I can't think of a single thing that they did wrong, or or a way that they did this that will inordinately benefit them versus uh, the PC scene in general. I think it's a great investment. So. Gaming being viable on Linux benefits us all. I agree. I absolutely agree. The, like, the way that gaming is going with... And and to be frank, like, that's one of the reasons I really support the good old game stores. Because they're... They sell games without DRM. You don't... Like, you have to make an account on good old games to buy a game. But you can make it with, like, a burner email, a throwaway password, whatever. You don't have to give them anything. You can give them money, they give you an installer, and that's it. You install it, there's no tracking, there's no nothing. So, if you, like, not that, not that you have to go off the grid, or that I, I suggest you even should, but the option should be there. I don't want private companies and big private companies to own everything about gaming. Including, like, streaming. If it all goes into streaming, then they, they've got it all. Um, and there, there are benefits to game streaming too, but... It, it still worries me that there's going to be a day where, like... There is no gaming without going through one of three companies. So decentralizing um, is a way to prevent that from happening, or at least to have an option. Uh, so uh, I think it's a positive step in that direction. Uh, I'm not suggesting that that's the best way to play video games. I just think it ought to be there. Like the second it goes away is like, then private companies have all the control. But as long as there's a way around it, a way to enjoy like, to keep the money specifically with the people who made the thing, and operate the thing. Okay, like that's 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 uh, kind of the the good stuff that I see behind everything else. Ah, <sighs> this time I'll be able to watch the stream. Well, dwarf bangity bang, welcome. Loving the chill vibe. Enjoy your commentary too. Well, thank you very much. Uh, didn't think about it from that perspective. I'm honestly kind of in the same boat where if I didn't already have a PC and Switch, I'd be more into it. But I'm not not considering it. Yeah, it's... 
they're gonna have like a ton of people. They're gonna get a, a decent number of sales. <coughs> Excuse me. Just because it's a really neat gadget. Um, the, for the for the price. The uh, well, let me see if this makes them attack. No. Oh oh shit. Okay. Hand shoved me back into a spiky boy. I'm gonna play a lot of top-down RPGs on it. It's just right for that. Yeah, with the touchscreen and everything. Um, it's just right for a lot of things. It is. It's weird because I would. I would say, oh my god, it's it's like the perfect niche PC for all of these like <laughs> Steam AA games. You know, games like Grime that don't need a. You know, five million teraflops. Oh, I can walk. Great. Hold L to walk. That's not working. I don't... Do I have to activate these or something? I have a hunt point, but... Okay. Maybe I have to... Maybe I have to, like, put resources into them at a, at a checkpoint or something. To unlock them. map is totally Hollow Knight-ish. Yeah. Which itself was Metroid-ish. Um, oh, here we... Yeah. This is... Okay. That's what a hunt point is for. Got it. Dang. Ah. Yep. Oh, there's weapon scaling for particular traits. All right. Cool. It's hitting all the notes. Hoont poont. <laughs> exactly. What's the plot of the game? Um, two human figures were breathing. One human figure bre bre breathed, brothed, breathed life into another. They swirled together in ancient mystical energies. Gave birth to the to Grime Man. Old grimy. Uh, I woke up. I got shoved by this pot. And that's about it, actually. I have I have theorized. Wait, what did I get? I got a hunt point for absorbing that one enemy that had a hash mark in their bar. And I'm gonna guess there's only so many of those because the ow. The number of upgrades you can get is pretty finite, too. Maybe they're just, like, special enemies in the world? Part of the exploration aspect? Papa Rock and Mama Rock made, made Hunter Rock. That's... Yeah, that's that's actually it. That is a great summary. Thank you. Sounds like a serial killer describing his sexual fantasies. I mean, yeah, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. Biblical myth can get pretty effed. And again, I'm assuming it's biblical myth. But, the rest of this stream will be me furiously, desperately pointing out any reference that I think supports my artistic... Why didn't I spawn here? What is this for? Maybe I can teleport to it. Papa Rock ate the first seven or so Hunter rocks. <laughs> Tummy filled with Hunter. To me filled with Hunter. Ooh. That's actually a pretty big smack. Oh. Okay. All right. I want to... I want to absorb you. Huh. Maybe you have to wait like a really long time. I I really do like uh, games that have like secondary interaction mechanics like that. Um, Persona, well, some of the Personas, Shin Megami Tensei kind of has that with like talking to enemies and trying to recruit, recruit them and stuff. You don't spawn on it? Well, I mean, yeah, I figured that much is kind of obvious, but 
What's it for then? I guess we'll find out. Also that, like, hitting the absorbs give you meter so that you can heal. Kind of reminds me of, um... Mortal Shell. So I guess I have to get up there to be able to absorb him. Means I probably need a movement ability that I don't have. Your head like a black hole or something. I don't know. Um, I speculate that it's the representation of the soul. Or maybe the absence of a soul. I think this game is an allegory for the formation of the human experience. <laughs> uh, sounds a little crazy when I say it like that. Oh, there's my guy. Okay. His head is... Not a hole. It's a... Oh, Jesus Christ. Maybe this is what happens when there's a body without a soul? Because my soul has moved into this body? Do I hit him? Yep. I still had... I still had currency, though, when I respawned, so I don't know what I lost or regained. Seems like you can't hit those, you have to counter them. You get so much personality by adding hands to things. That one was just scratching his little head. I got pants! Okay, breath. That's the meter. I played a uh, Nightmare Reaper at all. Huh. No, I haven't. I picked it up on GOG and it's really interesting. Feels like a bunch of stuff thrown together that should have turned into a mess, but it works really well. What's um what's thrown together about it? I'm intrigued. There's so many good games out there now, guys. It's ridiculous. Um I already have like a full stack of games to play today. <laughs> um not that I'm suggesting that you were suggesting that I change it up, but it's like there's, I can play like three games I've never played before today. There's this, Death Trash. Well, I played the demo Death Trash, but whatever. New game. Um, Death Trash and then um, Jupiter Hell. Looks really, really cool. That's like just just in the last week. It's not even the like full rush yet either. Although it seems like it seems like more often like the big fall releases. I don't know. That, that tradition seems like it's sort of I don't know. It, it's just, it's not what it used to be, you know? Oh! Maybe we get another hoont poont. It's just like the same huge franchises. And another game that looks pretty similar to, like, the formula, because it has to be, because it's really expensive to make. Seems like times have gotten all who the fuck. <laughs> Cause time's fucky for all of us. Yeah. Oh, or wait, maybe you're referring to something else. It's a boomer shooter with a pixel style. Levels procedurally generated with random events. Bunch of different styles, weapons that all end up being interesting rather than just 9 out of 10 of them being why bother. Okay, wow, that sounds really interesting. You've intrigued me. 2014 today, yeah. Yes, uh, in about an hour and a half, we'll be joining Re Regina Pringles, Regina Pringles, and Clouderoth Cephalout again, 
to help save the world. Um, our next... We got a lot of dungeons coming up, but the next big encounter that I'm excited for is Titan. I don't know how much time we have today, but I hope we get to Titan. I think Titan's like level 40, though, so... There's a lot of talking to get through. A lot of dungeons. I mean, the dungeons are fun, but... I think... I, I thought uh, Ifrit's music was better than it was. I didn't remember Ifrit. Ifrit's kind of straightforward. But Titan is like the real banger. Ah! Creepy! Oh, you got Gunbreaker yesterday? Nice. I think I'm gonna switch to Gunbreaker if slash when we get that high up. Oh, it's 36? For Titan? Oh, okay. Oh, your friend of the fall releases. Okay, yes. Never mind. Uh, Doctor, I think I think you're correct. Also, I feel like, what do we, what are the releases we know about this fall, the big ones? Battlefield 2042, Halo Infinite. I mean, it's mostly Xbox stuff, right? What does Sony got? Um, Forza Horizon 5 is this fall. Uh, and Walker uh, for Final Fantasy 14. I'm excited for that. There's no date on 16. Has Capcom got anything? Probably some Monster Hunter thing. As somebody who's invested time into the lore and story into Final Fantasy, does it slightly buggy that Bruce Speed runs it and skips every cutscene and dialogue? Not at all, no. Because uh, there's way too much story in that game. Um, I mean, it's it's like good for the people who want to be super fans of that game. I really, really, really like the game, and I've watched every cutscene when I played it. I don't remember 80% of that game's story. Because it's, you know, for me, it's been told over the course of a decade. So it's not that I have, like... I think it's well written, but I don't think Bruce is the kind of player that should spend his time uh, watching those, watching that dialogue. Like Bruce is, Bruce has watched a lot of TV and a lot of movies, and he has a a really good fix on like storytelling. And like, I just honestly, I think a lot of it would waste his time. I think there's some some cutscenes at the end of uh, like there's some Stormblood cutscenes and some um, Shadowbringers cutscenes that would be interesting, maybe, but. At the same time, they were interesting to me because I'm a JRPG and Final Fantasy dork. I don't think those those same things would would really appeal to him all that much. Uh, I think I could bottom line it, bottom line the cool parts for him to be like, "Huh, neat," and then we just go on and beat up magical monsters. Um, so no, it doesn't bother me at all. It's uh, in my in my age, I've grown to understand that the way that I uh, enjoy something is not remotely the way that other people have to enjoy a thing. Okay. I don't know about you, but I don't understand the concept of time anymore, and I imagine dev schedules got all screwed up. Yeah, I mean, they've all had to switch to, to remote production. Um, some games and expansions have been produced entirely remotely, which is, is pretty astounding. Uh, oh, Nightmare Reaper has Diablo and looter shooter types of weapons where they have random qualities. Last night I found a chainsaw that allowed me to blindly fly around by using the attached grappling hook. And the fact that it had recoil pushed me back every time I used it. Alright, that's pretty fun. Oh man, that reminds me, like, of just more spontaneous games. I gotta play Flight Sim more, man. I have all that gear and I never set it up. I was too intimidated. But I, what I've, I saw, um, actually one of the guys I used to work with at Machinima, Hutch, tweeted about, like, smoking weed and just flying to beautiful places on the planet. And I'm like, that's a great idea. <laughs> Jesus, that's the best idea. Um, yeah, you can play it in VR too? Oh. Yeah, Kyle, I agree. As long as Bruce is enjoying it, that's great. Um, if you, if you were to criticize it because of not paying attention or skipping, that would suck. Yeah, if, if he were to, like, he might, he might, like, rib the story, which is, you know, it's JRPG, so it's ribbable. But I don't think he'd ever sit there and say, this story sucks, without even investing in the cut. He, he's pretty principled about needing to watch something before, before, uh, commenting on it. But yeah, I don't think he cares. <laughs> He's, he's there for the, the big boss fights, which that game has in spades. There's just an amount of talking to get through to get to him, so. Uh, I tried it with a Hotas gear and it runs like ass on my 3070. Oh, damn. Uh, I'm not sure I ever heard you say anything about Death Stranding. Recently started playing it. It's my first Kojima game. I'm halfway through it, and even though I find it to be fascinating, I can't quite put my finger on it. Waiting, wanted to hear your thoughts. Um, I, I did a review for it, actually, for Inside Gaming back in 2019. So, if you want, like, the chronicle of my thoughts, they're all there. Um, but, it is a fascinating game. 
Um, it's it's original and, and mold breaking in a lot of ways. I think, and, and a lot of them are very subtle. I think the biggest thematic difference with that game, as opposed to like every other game, is that everything about its mechanics seek to continually remind you that it's not all just you. And I think that's the inverse of literally every other game. Every other game is like, you're the one hero that can do all this. You're the only one with video game powers. Please, Dr. Freeman, Master Chief, uh, Link, save our galaxy. And you do. But everything about Death Stranding is, is like it's more solitary and alone, while also reminding you that it is a game purely about construction and connection. Like, there's not a destructive element in it. I mean, you can, I guess you can try to kill some of the mules, and you can, like, dispel uh, BTs and things like that. But the goal of the game is to deliver stuff. It's not to, like, break anything down. It's to reconnect and rebuild. And you do that by cooperating with a bunch of other online players. Um, and your enemy is terrain most of the time. Um... It is, it is the natural environment that you overcome due to ex expertise, planning, uh, and execution. So it's uh, it's a FedEx job fair, basically. Yeah, basically. I think it's a fascinating game. It, it creates a game out of an entirely new concept. Uh, and it creates a game that's not necessarily about competition and, uh, and antagonism. I'm so happy about the games that don't make it all about you. It's one of the things I can't stand at MMOs when they do that. It's just very dissonant with the reality of the game, which fucks me up a bit. I mean, they play them any I play them anyway, but I'm a little mer about the premise. Yeah, um... So, to throw it back, uh, we were talking about 14 story. It is definitely, like, chiefly, uh... It's weird, because it's it's chiefly guilty of that. You are, you in Final Fantasy, you kind of have to be the hero, you know? That's part of the the, the setting. I always liked that in the trailers, they depict your character as just like the most dopey average Final Fantasy man, and they continue to do that. I think that's that's cutely representative of the fact that the hero is, is kind of swappable. But yeah, Ajax, yes, in the most recent expansion, they actually canonize the fact that there are multiple Warriors of Light, and they wrote it into the story in such a very fascinating way. Um, I think it's probably the only MMO that has adequately uh, address that, aside from just sort of writing in in the first couple of quests, like, oh, there's all these people here. You're one of this class. You're one of many. Oh, the other Scions? That's true. I mean, in, in Shadowbringers, like, a whole sub-story is about the other heroes that failed. Not only the leader, the other version of you, but also their party. And you get to, like, depending on the class you are, you get to learn their stories, too. It's pretty crazy. As the healer, I got to learn the story of the other white mage, that didn't save their world. Uh, it's so sick. It's so sick. I th it, d it does go a little like Chris Nolan with it. But, oh, you meant your scions? Wait, what do you mean by that? A challenging prey to get a hump. I've been stuck on this, this screen forever. Oh, they're telling me about hunt points. Too late. Uh. Do you like in Dark Souls? Implied all the others did the thing before you and you're just the latest. Yeah. I think S Souls has a very similar... Um, resonance. 100% benefit from resonance. Repelling an attack. What is... Re what is repelling an attack? Is that the absorption thing that I'm doing? But yeah, Death Stranding and... Um, and Dark Souls... I think are very, very similar in how they incorporate, they like, they hybridize single and multiplayer and do it in a way that you're basically wandering around in, ow, in like, an environment that is littered with the ghosts of other players. I'm not quite at Shadowbringers yet, but now I'm so stoked for my class quest there. Which, uh, which, are you DPS, tank? I'm excited to get back to Shadowbringers because now I'm playing a tank and I'll get to learn like wait, I thought I thought the hero was the tank of that. I'm not sure what whose story you get if you're the tank. Guess I'll find out. Or you hope Elden Rings brings something fresh to souls, but I have my doubts. Uh, I think I think it's gonna do something. 
And really, at the end of the day, if it's another if it's another Souls game, I'm okay with that. It can be another Souls game. The Scions are Alphano, Alize, Thancred, Ariange, Ishtol, and Estinian. You were talking about the Warrior of Darkness, Ardbird and Company. Um, I assumed that the Scions were just the other chosen party members. Um, in a in a given Final Fantasy plot, you know there is the main character or the hero, which you get to be in fourteen. But you know, there's a supporting cast. I don't think it implied that they that the any of the other scions were the like chosen one, right? But again, I haven't. It's been years, and I I can't profess to know every inch of the uh, of fourteen lore as much as it pains me. What's going on, little guy? You doing okay? Oh nope, that's a dash. So these splinters seem important. They seem to be placed in important spots. What do they do? Yeah. Crafting materials. Yeah, there's some... There's a lot of souls going on here. Not in a bad way. It's not quite as, um... Like, the combat is faster. It, it, it is... It's a Metroidvania with, like... Souls leveling and progression systems sort of sprinkled on top. Oh! I got tricked. Poont poonts. I mean, yeah, if it's... I mean, t based on the trailer, it really did seem like Elden Ring is basically like... Like Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, but with Dark Souls. So there's like... There's an overworld. There's like a, a central arena. There's like a Hyrule Field Zone. And that's where open world stuff happens. That's where... Uh, there's like... Caravans of enemies. Maybe like Light Metal Gear Solid Five Immersive Sim world simulation kind of stuff going down or like events from one area kind of cause things to happen in another area that would be a cool thing um for souls to experiment with but i think uh fundamentally you're still gonna kind of like ocarina you're gonna go through a transition zone into a dungeon and then there will be a more self-contained like dark souls experience inside that area um that's my theory Reminds you of Hollow Knight, especially in the traps and the setting you're in. Yeah, it's very it's very creepy and solitary like Hollow Knight is, that's for sure. Oh, Captain Cool, thanks for the sub. Oh, Mystic, thanks for the sub as well. Oh, man. People are people are people are talking about Souls lore. I love it. Or sorry, people are talking about 14 lore. Keep it civil, fellas. <laughs> you son of a bitch, let's take this outside. I feel Elden Ring is going to be like Darksiders 2. Yeah, yes, Darksiders 2 had exactly that format as well. Although Darksiders 2, I don't know, is... I really hope it's not like Darksiders 2. Darksiders 2 was like... That was a game that ran directly down the playbook of how do we try to sell more. They just kind of... People like Borderlands loot. All right, let's put in Borderlands loot. Aw, it's a Pope, baby. Didn't, I didn't really absorb it either. That was bizarre. I really, really, really like Darksiders, but when 2 came out, I was just like, man, I don't want to constantly be putting on different gloves just because the number's a little bigger. It's so meaningless. Like, Darksiders 1 had better design. But people like loot! I guess the best design is the one that people like. <laughs> would absorb a car? Hell yeah, I would. Oh! Oh, gosh. These demon babies suck.
tried Dark Siders 3 and it seemed to be more like one. Didn't hold my attention for some reason. Well, that's a shame. I'm glad to hear it's more like one though. Like demon babies or like dead, <laughs> like dead space babies. Ugh, God, the little bug babies. They're stupid little like fang mouths. They'd fly and chomp on you. God, those are gonna be gnarly in the remake. Man, God bless Capcom for setting the remake bar so high. I really hope that uh, that they try to met, like try to pull a Resident Evil two with that game. That would be so great. Great anatomical one. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, referring to the divinity of my form. Man was created in God's God's image, after all. I like my looty RPG games, but Darksiders wasn't really the game where I wanted to deal with all those stats. I just wanted to use the shiniest, most fun-looking weapons. Now I'd be told that I'd ha handicapping myself by doing so because it's ten levels lower than the basic weapon with much higher damage. Malleus, I agree. I agree. Um, to me, or rather, the design that seemed to, to fit really well with Darksiders was more like, you know, like Ninja Gaiden, where... You have a roster of five weapons. Maybe they upgrade as the game goes on, but those weapons fill a mechanical spread that you can then choose to use against certain kinds of enemies. Like maybe this enemy is better with a big, slow-hitting broadsword. This other enemy is fast, so you have to use the dual blades to get some hits in. That sort of thing. Description for this game listed as fast. I mean, I'm not moving very fast. I'm gonna guess there's a. Ugh, oh God. There's an eyeball monster over there. Oh, wait, I think this is. No, wait, this is a shortcut back to the save point. It means I'm probably about to fight my first boss, which is cool. I should go level up. Oh, compared to Katana Zero? Yeah. Oh, no, this game's not fast. <laughs> or like. Or like. Uh, Dead Cells. Jade? Thank you very much for the sub. Or hope I'm not. Hope I'm saying it correctly. Let's save it. I want to save up for that. Felt the same way about Bloodborne. Yeah, the uniqueness of the weapon attacks, depending on what weapon you were using, made me want to switch between them. And only getting to really fully upgrade two without. Doing a lot of chalice dungeons was annoying. Yeah, I only I only use the cane cane sword for the entire game. <laughs> Cause it's they only give you so many upgrade points, and if you feel like you need to do damage, why would you spread those resources out over multiple weapons? Oh no, there's a lot of dribbly eyes. My crying eyes looks like wax. Oh, okay. I finally found my head. They made it a little too big. A little too big. Oh. <gasps> oh. Look at that. The hand's doing like the same shove animation as all the pots to make you. Ah, like. That's such, such good, like. Design. They made me- they made me counter all those tiny pots with a stupid little hand that shoved me away. And then they had the first boss do that exact thing. So they're like, counter it, please. Please remember how to counter. Okay. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Oh, it gets worse. Nice. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah. <laughs> he woke up. Okay. The wall doesn't stop moving. Got it. So, you don't, you don't lose resources when you die, right? What does this do? I get pink back. It doesn't do anything. Well, wait. Oh, that's right, I have a little scarf around my ball. Maybe that's like death insurance. 
Maybe it gives you one more death than Dark Souls usually does. So if like, if I have my scarf and I die, then I drop my scarf. But if I die without my scarf, then I drop all my resources? Well, we'll see. Hey, what's up, Spaghettis? This game is super odd, but it gets pretty solid as it goes on. The world building is wild. Yeah, the world building is what I'm, I'm fascinated with right now. I have my theories about what this game is about. What they're trying to, what they're trying to represent, but... Ah. Oh, dang it. Ah, I keep messing up the timing. Okay, so you have to have four meter to do the regen. to absorb its purple sparkle power. Our door. This is the amount of mass gained. Ah, so it's humanity. Gotcha. Gained by crushing or absorbing prey, or just lost upon taking damage. Oh, that's neat. Okay. More meters, I'm into it. What do y'all think that was an amalgam of? Good question. Um, I'm gonna guess like creative, creative attempts. This almost feels like the primordial creative space. Oh, I don't have the, I don't have an ability to do this yet. This feels like the sort of like creative limbo before the the origin of the world as we know it. So like, some deranged god was trying to create life, and these are these are where he tosses all of his creations, and you might you're like pursuing form and soul to to make it out and and enter reality, I guess. That's where I'm at right now. And you got a cute purple scarf. Look at that. It is a mix of purple and blue, which is sort of the... Or I guess it's more purple and red. It was like the bisexual lighting stuff. Hmm. I was hoping there was a you tried sticker emote I had somewhere, but I'm wrong. With like the star and everything. Man, that's so good. Uh, quick break. I'm gonna... I feel like... My RoboVac is about to eat something expensive. I hear it in the bedroom because I didn't shut the door. I'll be right back. Hey, as as predicted. As predicted. Gigi was being a little scamp. Chewed on some, uh, chewed on some cords. That's okay. Those were already chewed on. Oh, great. Am I becoming God? Uh-oh. <laughs> Call them boulder heads because their heads kind of look like boulders. I don't think they get it, though. Hi, hi. This dialogue almost reminds me of something from a Suda51 game. Just, like, creepy weirdos that say things that kind of phase in and out of logic. Uh, 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 
Uh, Finally got to Shadowbringers. Yes! Shadowbringers is some, some like, primo JRPG content. Good stuff. I mean, it's, it's, I would say it's partially, oh, hold on. Entering a new biome. Oh dear. This mostly makes me want to turn back though, because there was that hallway I didn't explore. But we got a vista, let's enjoy it. Like, what's he reaching for? What's Grime reaching for? God? Is that God? I think that's God. That looks like God. If I saw that in the sky, I'd be like, well, I'm fucked. <laughs> okay, that's fair. Yep, that thing probably made me and it's real pissed off, so okay, do what you're gonna do. Jesus. Okay, so let's just... I'm gonna take another peek. Oh, they're not there anymore? Oh, there you are. There's our guy. It's, it's two-tone color, but it's like different. So our our character was like, I keep using it because again, I'm very proud of knowing what it what it means. Stephanie told me what I meant the other day. Um, is like bisexual lit, so like, very a lot softer shades of like purple and red. But this is like very infected. It's green. The purple and red is still there, but it's got these like green infected tendrils running through it. Um, it makes it look, uh, off. Makes it look diseased. Something's wrong with it. It's corrupted. If we're talking about uh, artistic imagery, green often represents infection and corruption. Which is why the Matrix is often tinted green. Wait, there was another cave, I thought. Was it just that? Maybe it was just that. It was just that. Never mind. That lighting doesn't look very bisexual. It was it was far stronger at the beginning of the game when they were basically introducing the formation of our our whatever this guy is, whatever this thing is, grime. Unformed desert. Okay, so we've we've exited the drippy caves and now we're into an unformed desert. No water, no life, but it's something. There's a sun. There's light. Uh, what did you think of Playdead's Inside, especially the ending of it? I wanted to like it so much, but I can't really accept for the atmosphere. Um, I thought it was, it was a lot more... It was less literal, which is weird, because even, even Limbo was, was rather figurative. But, I think you have to... It's definitely a game where I think you have to come at it with your own mind, and come away with your own meaning. Um... Which you could say means that it's not well formed, or okay, here we go. It's Ardor. I got it. Okay, destroyed vessel mends your current vessel and returns half of your lost Ardor. Ardor increases mass gain by up to 100%. Got to gain mass, bro. I mean, that's the idea, though. Mass. It's not gain matter, though. It's gain mass. I guess it's it's like gain weight on this earth, gain presence, gain. Strength. Gain existence. I don't know. The green representing corruption thing is interesting. It makes me think of Fel in Warcraft. Can you think of additional examples beyond the Matrix? Um... Like in, in cinema? Oh, you gotta go to work? Alright, Pop-Tart. Have a good day. Thank you for dropping in. Hope you have a great- Oh, my- my followers made a shrine for me. Stone born of the broken sky. Huh. Interesting. Uh, maybe Green Knight also? Wouldn't say it's extra- It's, uh- Oh yeah, Fallout. Fallout is very green and desaturated. Fallout 3. I actually noted with, like, Fallout 3 to Fallout 4, I was like, oh, they're making it less less green. They're making it more colorful. The trailers were a little more uplifting and, like, showed, like, blue skies. Because 4 was about construction and rebuilding. And I'm like, 
that's neat. Okay, okay. I like I like the artistic and tonal shift. That actually makes sense, and I respect it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I also think Fallout 3 was kind of... A lot of games at that time were just sort of post-Matrix in, uh, in their aesthetic. Uh, like, the shooters at the time were all very, like, green and brown. Then again, green is also tinted over, like... I'm thinking of, like, Call of Duty. Um, movies often taint... Or American films often tint uh, other other lands as green or desaturated because they're they're not a they're not other countries can't have the vibrant colors that United States can. Oh, you know that too, Malcolm. Yeah, it was it was a neat it was a neat touch. Oh, so. And I I thought it was also sort of symboling that they were trying pretty clearly artistically to signal that this game was going to start branching out into a new direction. Like this isn't. Fallout 1. It's not Fallout 2. It's not Fallout 3. It's called Fallout 4, but we're going to try to, like, Shame. nudge you in the ribs that it's changing. Four. Yeah. I unironically miss drab, depressing palleted games like Fallout 3 and older CODs. I feel like Fortnite has had a huge influence on visual design and I miss the grit of the previous decade. Hmm. Yep. Uh. I think when I, what I have started to notice, I think I'm, I think I'm getting to the age now where this, this tr trends are becoming a little more apparent because I've seen a few of them come and go. Um, perhaps an unpopular opinion. If it is unpopular, it's only because there there is a greater cycle at play where, you know, aesthetic trends throughout the ages are, they hit for whatever reason. If people could predict that, they would have made a lot of money a long time ago. Um, but to some degree, there is like, there's like a few big uh, artistic influencers. Fortnite is one of them. The Matrix was another. That sort of set an, an aesthetic standard for a while. But like all things, it, People get tired of it eventually. And again, there's no formula to determine when this happens. But things move through cycles. Uh, people get really excited about this new thing because it's new and different and exciting and it's not the old thing. Um, and then that lasts for a while and people are like, man, this new thing's so great. And then everyone makes the new thing. And then everyone's like, man, there's too much of this new thing around. We need something different. And then after a beat or two, something else comes along that actually does satisfy that... that Emergent zeitgeist. I was looking for a second, like... I was wondering if Cyberpunk 2077 was going to be that thing, but... Doesn't seem like it. It was like, exact... It seemed like it was kind of the right amount of time to wrap around. Another pass on, like, late 90s Cyberpunk, but... Nah. I think I think we moved on. Don't you think the Fortnite look and all that encompasses has been more has more staying power though because it's so marketable to younger demographics. I feel like we're locked into this forever now because it sells to everyone. No, I mean even kids are gonna get tired of it. Um, that those trends change as well. I mean certain like certain design elements will kids will always love. Expressive characters, bright colors, um, funny looking and funny sounding people, funk music. But I think beyond that, it's thing, things shift and move. I think Cyberpunk flipping good killed the momentum of the movement. It's a huge reason it was coming back, and it has the name. That's not a JC. That's that's a really that's a really interesting observation. I think a prescient one. I agree. I think uh, I think as a game, Cyberpunk was not as like gleefully destructive as people were hoping it would be. Or people assumed that it would be. I don't know. It, it actually had... That game, at least, had subtlety to it that I don't think people were prepared to accept. Um, beyond being a broken mess on consoles. Uh, oh, I get a punch weapon? It's got an X next to it. I can't equip it? Ooh, I need some stats. Oh, look at that. It's got scaling too crazy. You play Tarkov? Not really. No, nothing. In I've had the I've had the game described to me, and I have to be honest, it doesn't it doesn't sound appealing to me. 
for the things that I like out of games. I mean, I like the tension aspect of it, but I can get that out of games without the multiplayer element and other players doing their absolute best all the time to destroy me and everything that I care about. Huh. I guess there's gonna be... well... ooh. I guess I have to have an ability. Or not! Oh, okay. Was somebody holding that door? Well, it's a good thing I killed them and let a little finger start twitching. I don't miss the lack of color either. It was a trend in the late 2000s and I'm happy that the visual styles changed over the years. I I, I tend to feel the same way. Um, I mean, I, I have nostalgia for like Gen 7 aesthetic, but I'm sure it'll come back and so oops, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, dude. I did not mean to do that. Interesting. Okay. It had a meter this time. Oh, now it's running away from me? Shit, I can't take that hit, I don't think. Alright, I can't take that hit. <laughs> that color, gray and brown are colors. That's true. I mean, that... What's weird is that trend had existed in, in certain games before. And I actually think it informed the, the look and feel of the Matrix, given, given the Wachowskis. It wouldn't surprise me if, if Quake, as an aesthetic, were rattling around in, in, the, in the basement of the Matrix at some point. Because that whole movie is so tuned in to specifically, like, the dream of early to mid-90s cyberpunk. And then kind of perfectly encaptured and expressed through film. Man. Can't wait for games journalists to use the phrase, this is the death grips of video games. I think I said that, but it was when we were playing the... When Kryken and I were playing the Wolverine game. <laughs> that was glitched to shit. Oof. And even I was stealing it from chat, so... One thing to take into account is monotone palettes don't translate well into indie content due to the low fidelity of resources used. Yeah, there's only a few games that I think would stand in opposition to that. Um, like Devil Daggers, BPM. There, there are some games that sort of do have that gross palette. Raven, um, Gloomwood. But then again, these like every game I'm listing is also very explicitly a 90s throwback game. So, you know. That's, like, the point, is that it looks like that. Rizal Mine, 18, thanks for gifting a sub. Awfully generous sub, yeah. Ow! Dang it. These guys are bitches. They're just b-holes. No! Oh, whew. Oh, that's interesting. Now that I think about it, I think my preference for gritty brown versus colorful fun might come down to whether or not you enjoy the power fantasy. Military tactical has always appealed to me. I just liked existing in grim worlds where I can fuck shit up. I was fortunate to have a very adversity-free upbringing, so instead of safe escape escapism, I preferred dark, violent content. I think I just had a breakthrough. Verbose. That's, that's a great breakthrough to have. I'm going to go one further. All right? And, and don't let me, like, imply anything. Don't take this as an assault to your free will or your autonomy as a, as a thinking intelligent individual but it could also just be that those were the games you played at that age in your life and if you were born 10 years later you might be saying the same thing 10 years from now about bright colorful games when the gritty ones roll back around again so something to think about uh, i've been thinking a lot about that myself lately the things about me that i know are distinctly me and the things that i can actually trace to being a part of my environment or the the times and circumstances i grew up in it doesn't really matter, you know, one way or the other, you're still who, who you are. God, that thing is gross. Oh, uh, you playing with Bruce later? Yes. Um, in about 40 minutes, 2.30 p.m. Pacific, I'll be joining Bruce for some more Final Fantasy XIV. And we're in the warp zone now. I got a car to drive Bruce around on. I'm doing New Game Plus, so I know exactly the quest to take him to. You say Red Dead 2 has a particular palette. I mean, yeah, I every great artistic work is selective about the colors they use. Um, 
if you just throw colors out willy-nilly, I mean, it looks like a photograph. And that's fine, but, but like, image composition and artistic unity is present in, I would say, like, 99.9% .9 of all the, like, great works of art. Uh, so yes, of course. Uh, I think each individual city has its own color palette. Each biome has its own color palette. Each, like, environment. Each time of day. Um, yeah. If, if you can look at a... Yeah, so Cruelty Squad. Cruelty Squad is fascinating because it very explicitly violates that. It has every color, every clashing pattern all the time. Um, overall, it's pretty true and neutral. I think good good art design looks that way. It is a very colorful game. That is true. But uh, I still think there's like... There's still something to be said for not showing like full red and full blue right next to each other. It makes it look ridiculous. It makes it look like that's a checkerboard pattern that you use to simulate not having a texture in place or something like that. So, so like, yes, but I think there's still a lot of effort put in to make sure that things don't go too far outside of like the color wheel for the given area that they're in, the shades and hues of the area they're in. Like right here, if, if there were like just a bright red b rock falling in the background, you'd be like, what the hell is that? Even if, I don't know, it's supposed to be iron or whatever, um, it would stick out and there wouldn't be a whole lot of reason why. And it's just a random color that, like, is too loud. That's a weird, that's a weird example, and I don't know that it quite <laughs> illustrates the point I was trying to, but... I guess, I guess, uh, underneath it all, very fundamentally, I'm just trying to suggest that a, a significant amount of expertise, thought, and effort go into the creation and implementation of good games. And none of it's an accident. Sometimes I think we just like, we get to enjoy the, the benefits of so many talented people, or the labor of so many talented people, the artistic output of so many talented people, that our expectation for the baseline creative output has just gone way, way up. The expertise we expect to see. Not necessarily a bad thing. I think it's, uh, you know, it's evidence that we live in a, a privileged time as far as uh, media consumption goes. There's, there's other things that may not be so hot about these days, but certainly there's a lot of media. Oh, we got, ah, oh, we got bomb, bomb flowers. Nice. And my boys are still making little shrines for me. Oops. Okay, it respawns. I should have known that. I'm sure some stuff are happy little accidents. I agree. I think I think like there's all that that spontaneous moment is always going to happen and, and it's a good thing. I think to some degree it takes talent and expertise to seize it and refine it when you get that moment of spontaneous creativity. Sorry, I'm just checking my my phone making sure I'm caught up on things. Um But I think I th I think the uh the finished product is a result of of a, a lot of like talented people working deliberately and, and diligently to make a thing in a very crafted way according to like principles and best practices. It just elbows knuckles, that's true. Nothing else today matters. Uh wonder how much of the palette of a game like Fortnite works now because of the color revolution of TVs in the 10s. Uh, TVs over the past few years is not 4K, but the colors a TV can achieve. That's a really good point. Um, it reminds me of, like, movies and TV that came out shortly after, like, um, color, basically, in their respective mediums. Sometimes it was, it was the ridiculous overuse of color that started to define things from that era. Not just referring to, like, Wizard of Oz who's, like, a good portion of that movie is just the stylistic incorporation of color. But, like, dance dance numbers where the women just had, like, just whole rainbows of outfits they were wearing and stuff like that. Okay, there's a certain high-pitched tone. I couldn't tell if it was coming from the game or my vacuum. I think it's the game. Would Fortnite look good on an average aughts TV? Well... Compare it to, I guess, what was considered the pinnacle of kids' entertainment at the time. Like, some, like, some, like a Ratchet and Clank, a Jack and Daxter, um, Crash Bandicoot. Like, these games were Mario 64. These games were very bright and colorful. Mario 64, like, 
throws primary colors all over the place because it is a you know it's a kid's game. Um, I would say Mario 64 is about as vibrant as as Fortnite, just in a you know a different way. Fortnite I think leans much more into like the body and facial animation of its characters. It's also just as an experience kind of kind of different. <laughs> it's about building and strategy and competition, whereas Mario 64 is about exploration and I guess acrobatics. I love how they pull the sword out of themselves. The thing about a lot of color theory and design is that it is intuitive and unconscious for many people. So even when people think they're doing things arbitrarily, they're still working with things and they intuitively understand. You're right about that. You're absolutely. I mean, I, I don't have a whole lot of color theory knowledge, especially not like formal knowledge. I never studied anything like it, but um, from working on YouTube thumbnails, it is sort of the thing where like, your brain knows when something looks pretty. You're, and what's really frustrating is your brain knows when it doesn't. But your brain may em emotionally know that it doesn't look good, but you're, intellectually you're not sure why. Um, to me, the more that I work on thumbnails, it's like, it's colors and shapes. Uh, and if, if I can make that combination... Ah, Christ. That's a really interesting bomb placement. Specifically there to mess with you if you miss that jump. Or if you don't dash. Like, they keep... Reminding you that you're supposed to dash to move horizontally, even in the air. Uh, Colin Film, thank you very much for the raid. Hello, everyone. Hello and welcome. Just playing a pretty wild game here. Oh, I gotta go get my body back. Damn. Game has fall damage, right? What did you do when a thumbnail didn't look good? Um, I mean, I started, I started just kind of rigidly adhering to color wheel basically like picking a subject that has a dominant color um so like all right I, I guess I guess here's here's my thumbnail design processes one is like design decide the subject what what's going on what do you want people's eyes to see and immediately recognize I know what that is and I want to click on it so decide on that um and that can sometimes you can have sometimes you can have a great subject that is too many colors I've had that happen before when like a subject itself has clashing colors inside of it. Then sometimes I'll desaturate some of the colors that don't fit um, or change them or add my own color, like a color overlay to drag it, drag it back to the, the colors that I need. Um, the subject is also a certain size, so it has to like, for, for at least for inside games thumbnails, we've kind of converged on having us and then and then bolded text in the middle. So it's really just a matter of like making the text legible um, and making it fit around any other subject matter. So did you head a black hole? Yeah, it is a void of some sort. A big red circle and arrow. I don't know if that works anymore. It, it might. I do have 10 plus years of media knowledge and you're absolutely right about subtle color harmony and grading in a game like Red Dead 2. I think somebody's doing the it's Wednesday my dudes yell. But it's not Wednesday. <sighs> yeah, I guess I mean it's I I would say uh I mean color theory is, is everywhere in any kind of visual art. But I'm trying to think of filmmakers that have I mean Nicholas Winding Refn is goes bananas with color. Um Gamal del Toro uh is an outrageous, like his his color is outrageous. Um, Vianouf. God, there. I mean, there are entire there are entire like Twitter accounts dedicated to showing you the color palette in a given scene, and I think that that makes it so illustrative how like how much more something hits and even sells the mood of a given scene or character if the colors are also in line with that. Oh, Wes Anderson. Oh yeah, Jesus Christ, Wes Anderson. Can't believe I didn't think about Wes Anderson. Dario Argento? Is that Suspiria? I'm trying to remember. Oh, Edgar Wright? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Suspiria is wild with color. And he uses color in, like... I don't know. Usually I associate color with, like, vibrance and, uh... Ha like, maybe not necessarily happiness, but Jesus Christ. Suspiria takes, like, very bold, bright colors and makes them terrible. <laughs> Suspiria is just a... Just a wretched movie. I mean, I like it. 
I didn't really like the new one, actually. The remake? It was actually kind of disturbing. I mean, Suspiria was disturbing, so whatever, I get it. But at the same time, I was like, man, come on, that's just... This is just like... This almost feels like fetishizing human misery at a few points. And like, blah. This just makes me gross. Makes me feel gross in my tummy tum. Ah! Have you seen the man from Earth? No. Not familiar with that. The new one has some interesting bits, but I think it goes overboard with the gross stuff. Yeah, that, that was my takeaway too. And I usually don't get squeamish with film. I think it's more the like... It's never what I'm seeing on screen that disturbs me. It's it's like... It's the creative intent of, of the, the creators behind it. The idea that somebody would... Would want to put this in front of somebody. Or like, trying to divine why I'm seeing what I'm seeing. And I really... With, with the Suspiria remake, I was like... I can't see anything other than just sheer human cruelty to show this. And it just really doesn't... It doesn't... It, it doesn't make me feel good. <laughs> like, I can... I don't have to feel good watching a film, as long as I understand and appreciate what's trying to be... trying to be said. I guess to some degree, wallowing in human misery can be a point unto itself. But... Nah. I guess that's that's part of the human psyche or part of the human experience. I don't see a lot of value in exploring myself. Oh, Bruce Bruce is live? Alright. I will uh Wallowing in human misery is definitely not my jam. I don't need it. Yeah, I mean it at the I know that I have a much different or, I think I have a different interpretation than some, maybe not all, but... That was, I mean, that was my kind of emotional takeaway after I finished Last of Us Part 2. I was like... I took it on faith that this was going to say something. Or, or maybe make its, its absence of saying something meaningful in another way. And to me, at least, it just never got there. I just remember being so crestfallen. But that's just me. I have seen um, people write about how much it means to them, and you know, I I believe I believe them. Uh, I just I can't find that connection myself. So a type of misery in film and TV games have been increasing for a while now. I wonder. I wonder if it's truly increasing or if it's. There's always been stories like that. I feel like. Maybe there's just more stories in general. Oh, no! So it feels like... Oh, they actually bailed me out. Um, so it feels like there's more negative ones, because... Also, certainly, a mark of the last... Last three or four years has been cynicism and despair. I haven't seen Prisoners. No, that's, um... That's, uh... Winter, right? How am I blanking on his name? Alex Garland. My bad. Oh, I thought Edgar... Edgar Winter? What? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that was Alex Garland, yeah? Wrote Prisoners? I think that's the only Garland written thing I haven't seen. Oh, it was Villeneuve. That's right. Never mind. I knew it was like one of the... I haven't seen it. My bad. I got it totally off. What was... What, what am I thinking of? Hold on. What am I thinking of? I don't know what I'm thinking of. Maybe Sunshine? Maybe? I don't know. Anyway, no, I haven't seen it. Oh! I got a tongue. Why does it look like it has teeth? Gosh. I'm appreciating this shrine, though. Prisoners is very good. Won't rewatch it though. It's it's hard. Oh, it's one of those movies. Okay, I can I can make it through pretty much everything one time, as long as it you know as long as it as long as it has a meaning. I think see like and it's weird because I think even even a movie like Hostel has has meaning because at least it has commentary by the end of it. Its excesses its excesses are are at least explained, legitimized, or contextualized.
Enemy is also a good movie of his. I haven't seen that. Hey, what's up, Scott? Good to see you. Hope all is well. Hope you are happy, healthy, and gaming. Uh, but speaking of speaking of always gaming, I think I got to take a quick break. I wanted to get to a checkpoint. I got to a new area, right? There's got to be a checkpoint around here. Uh, I got to take a quick break, eat a uh, eat a eat a protein bar, and get ready get ready to wreck up some MMOs with my boy Bruce. Oh, Jesus, guy! Mm. Hey. Oh, interesting. That's like a different colored health bar. Oh! Oh, I was out of... That's right. Forgot that parries... Or... Dodges are the same juice as... As attacks. What's up, progressive? Damn it! Oh, I missed the last one. Mm. Gosh, this goes so far back. I must not have found. There must be another crystal or a map or something. God, that's so far away. Heek. I don't know how you uncover map. I don't remember how I did that. Well, anyway, all right. I gotta take a. I gotta take a. I gotta take a quick break. Um, Bruce and I are gonna get back to the Final Fantasy fourteen. Leveling and dungeon grind in a in a bit. That's in about 20 minutes from now. Maybe more like 15. Um, so, uh, the white pip on their HP is a marker. It indicates the point which you can start the absorb from. Yeah, I, I, I figured that was the case. Oh, what's this? Oh, that's a, that's a weapon? I don't know, me neat. Eh, 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 eh. <laughs> That's kind of neat. Kind of like a, a sensor. Something you burn holy herbs in. A. All right. I'm going to take a quick break. Ooh, Agnatog. Hello and welcome. Uh, but goodbye for now. Um, for now, I'm going to be gone for about 15 minutes. I'm going to eat eat some lunch and then get ready to, to play more anime with Bruce. Maybe give Bruce a call. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be on Discord with him soon enough. That's a brazier. 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 Bridger. I don't know. How, I never learned how to say that. I've never heard it said out loud. I've only read it in books. Oh, it's a weird weapon. You build up stacks, then deal damage by burning the stacks. Oh, is that what you do with like? Okay, that's what you do with a. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. Brazier. Okay, easy. Brazier. Oh. We have some. We have some. We have a bit of divergence in chat. Braze ear. Braze ear. Braze ear. Just say brah. All right. Brah. It's a nice brah. Hup. <laughs> All right. I'll be back in a minute. I'm going to have a snack. Uh, I encourage you to have a snack too. Get up. Stretch. Have some water. Maybe do uh, some jumping jacks. You never know. These could be the jumping jacks that save your life. All right. I'll be back. See you guys soon. Fire in my soul. Live in by the sunshine. Is too